Hello and welcome to this tutorial on frame relay configuration and verification. This is the second of two tutorials dedicated to frame relay configuration. And here we're going to look at setting up frame relay on a network that's using a partial mesh topology. In other words, one where a virtual circuit between each router pair does not exist. Now the approach we're going to take is not terribly different than what we already covered when we configured frame relay in a fully mesh topology. However, there are some key differences and we'll point those out along the way. Here's our lab setup for this tutorial. And physically it looks the same as the last configuration tutorial for frame relay. However, logically it's much different. So here we have two virtual circuits, one between router A and B and one between router A and C. There's no virtual circuit between router B and C, and that's why this is a partially meshed topology. Now this design is often called the hub and spoke design. Router A is our hub, and routers B and C connect to the hub in order to connect to everyone else. Okay, so A is the hub and B and C are the spokes. Now we're going to configure the hub in this tutorial, that's router A. And as we've mentioned in other tutorials, when you have a partially meshed topology, it's common practice to treat each of the virtual circuits as if they were point-to-point -point circuits themselves. So that means on router A, we're going to use sub-interfaces and a different subnet for each virtual circuit. So, router A is going to create one sub-interface for the connection to router B, and a second sub-interface for the connection to router C. Here's the del information we'll use for each of these routers. Router A is 29, router B is 59, and router C is 101. Now just like last time, we need to take three steps in order to complete this. First, we set up our encapsulation. Next, we have to address any LMI concerns. And then finally, we have to go ahead and set up any IP to del mappings. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump on the router A and get started. Okay, let's take a look at our access link, which is serial 000. And you can see it has not been configured yet. So, the first thing we need to do is to enable frame relay on this interface. Just like last time, we'll go into the interface and encapsulation frame relay. Again, we'll use the default Cisco type and we hit enter. Now, there's really nothing else we need to do on this interface and I'll tell you why. The next step would be to configure LMI and again we can use the AutoSense default behavior of the router in order, to in order to detect what the frame relay switch is using and that's what we'll do here as well. Also we do not have to configure an IP address on the physical interface because those IP addresses, remember, are moved to the sub-interfaces. Okay, so just what we've done so far, we've completed encapsulation and we'll use the default behavior for LMI. So steps one and two are already done for us. Okay, so let's take a look at the running configuration for the serial interface. As expected, there's no IP address and the encapsulation has been set to frame relay. So that means our next step is to go ahead and create the sub-interfaces, one for each of the virtual circuits on our access link. And we do that like this, interface serial 000, since that's the access link, and we create the sub-interface by issuing a decimal and then a number. And you can see the number range is very, very big. You can choose almost anything you want and it does not have to coincide with any of the frame relay Delsi information or anything like that. Okay, so it's up to you. Sometimes people use a circuit number. Sometimes people do put the Delsi number on there. It's your choice. I'm going to use dot one. And then we have to tell the router what kind of sub-interface this is going to be. I'm going to make it a point-to-point -point sub interface because we're only connecting to this one virtual circuit to router B. Now we're inside the sub interface and here's where I want to configure my IP address. Okay, so we can go ahead now and take a look at our sub interface running configuration. 
and here it is. We just have an IP address on there. Now that we have the subinterface, we need to go ahead and tell the router which DELSI is associated with this point-to-point -point link. We do that by issuing the frame relay interface DELSI command, and then we have to enter the DELSI. Now this is going to router uh, B, which we know is DELSI 59. Now once we do that, the router will know to use DELSI 59 for this subinterface. So what does this mean? Well, for each subinterface that's a point-to-point -point type, we just enter one frame relay DELSI. I'll show you again. Let's go ahead and create a subinterface for our link to router C. We'll give it an IP address. And then we need to go ahead and tell this one which DELSI to use. And we said that was 101. Okay, so now let's take a look at our running configuration. You can see here we have serial 000, just like we looked at earlier, earlier. and then we have our two sub-interfaces, 1 and 2, and there's a DELSI associated to each one. Now the router will know on which point-to-point -point link a DELSI belongs. Okay, the last thing to do is to confirm that this is working. In the last tutorial, we took a look at the show frame relay PVC command. We also took a look at the map command, and then finally the show frame relay LMI command. You can use all of those here again as well. I want to show you one other method you can use uh, for a very quick test of your, of your work, and that is just quite simply to ping the other side. And here you can see I can successfully ping across our virtual circuit, uh, which is configured on the sub-interface, which goes over to router B. Okay? Okay, so let's summarize what we talked about. We began by setting up the encapsulation for frame relay on a physical interface. And that's all we did. But then we started creating sub-interfaces with the interface serial command. We specified a sub-interface number, and then we said what type it was. Keep in mind, point-to-point -point only allows one virtual circuit, whereas multi-point allows multiple virtual circuits. And then we had to go ahead and map the frame relay DELSI number to each serial sub-interface. That way the router would know which DELSI belongs to which sub-interface. Okay, and just as before, we can use the same show commands in order to verify our work. And don't forget to use something like a ping command as well to get proof positive that your traffic can flow over the virtual circuit. Okay, so that's it. That is how to configure frame relay in a partially mesh topology. Thanks for watching.